This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar, Introduction to Risky Project 7.1. My name is Michael Trumper. I'm one of the principals here at Intaver Institute, and I've worked in the area of project risk management and software development for almost 20 years. We're really excited about our new release. It's a result of over two years of development and includes several new features as well as improvements to existing functionality. Before we start, I would just like to go over some housekeeping on how you can participate in the webinar. On the top right hand corner of your screen, you should see a pane that's appeared. Uh, on the audio, we always recommend using the mic and speakers, your computer mic and speakers, as they tend to give you a better performance. There's also a questions pane where you can ask questions. During the webinar, as questions come in, if there are questions regarding technical issues, we will try and deal with those right away. Otherwise, we'll wait till the end of the webinar before we address any of the questions in a Q&A session at the end. To start with the presentation, we're just going to go over a slide deck uh, to uh, highlight the major features that we have in the new release. And then I'll move over to a live demonstration of these features. So one of the major new features we brought in is the importing schedules from Oracle Primavera XER. Uh, while we resisted for, for several years of not uh, implementing the XER format, uh, there are some limitations to the MSP XML export out of Oracle uh, P6. Um, so with this new release, we've added both the import and opening. There's two slightly different um, capabilities. One opens a new file and one overwrites a file. But we've added both of those to the release and can be accessed from the file menu. Schedule diagnostics. The schedule diagnostics is based on the DCMA 14 point schedule analysis. Uh, the DCMA 14 point schedule analysis is widely regarded as the standard for schedule diagnostics. Our schedule diagnostics includes a set of 21 tests, which can test for logical errors and ensure that the schedule is aligned with scheduling best practices and optimized for Monte Carlo simulations. Critical path and criticality index. We can now calculate critical path, determine critical tasks, and calculate critical path metrics. Both as part of deterministic calculations and Monte Carlo simulations. For example, the criticality index shows how many times a task was on the critical path during a Monte Carlo simulation. Uncertainty bands. Uncertainty bands are predefined ranges of coefficients used to automatically calculate values for low and high durations and fixed costs for selected tasks. Tasks that have a similar ranges of uncertainty are assigned different shading for quick identification in the project views. Uncertainty bands include an interface that allows users to easily assign bands to selected tasks. Schedule call consolidation. Schedule consolidation generates an equivalent project schedule with the same duration and cost as the original schedule by consolidating sequential tasks, removing redundant summary tasks, and some other optimizations. Consolidation is useful when you're performing Monte Carlo simulations on extremely large projects. Uh, 
We've added the risk assignment view. The risk assignment view replaces the old global risk view. And it is a list of all the risk assignments to tasks and resources. The view allows you to quickly reassign that risk to different tasks and resources, define correlations, and create a report of risk assignments. It includes both global and local risks. Scenario analysis using multiple cumulative probability plots. Scenario analysis can, can now be performed using multiple baselines plotted as S-curves associated with the results of Monte Carlo simulations of different baselines. By view, viewing multiple cumulative probability plots, you can compare the uncertainties of different project scenarios. These multiple S-curve plots are available at the project and activity level. Improved filtering and sorting of the risk register. Risky Project now has Excel style filtering and sorting of risk register columns based on the contents. In addition, you can now create different views of the same risk register with a different set of columns filtered and sorted in different orders. These views are presented as bottom tabs in the risk register. Export to Microsoft Excel. All data tables can be exported directly to Microsoft Excel and it will launch Microsoft Excel. These can be used as a useful uh, tool for creating Excel reports or moving data into Excel, uh, which can then be used as a uh, launching point for either reports or integration with other third-party tools. An improved risk report. Risk report now includes risk reviews, and we've improved the formatting of it. There were some issues that were, have been uh, identified, and we've cleaned that up. Incident management. This is a module that is available with the enterprise version. The incident management has a very similar workflow to our risk management, uh, shares much of the same uh, data types, if you want to say. Risks and incidents can be linked together. Uh, I'm not going to show it in the live demo today, uh, but if you are interested, we will be able to set up a demonstration at uh, your convenience. Uh, some other new features that are uh, interesting, automatic calculation of the cost risk. So we can calculate the cost of risk. This is uh, built into the mitigation planning. So if we want to uh, calculate the, the cost of a risk, that includes the uh, original if a risk occurs, uh, the expected value of the risk, which is the impact time probability and uh, allows you to uh, get a more accurate understanding of what the risks actually could cost you as opposed to uh, doing a more qualitative or qualitative ass assessment of that. Uh, actual work input, so it's part of the uh, <clears throat> tr uh, tracking mechanism if you want, if you have actual costs and you have actual performance, uh, you can calculate the actual costs uh, that you've incurred by entering in actual work hours uh, for each resource on each task. And we've improved some of the user interface uh, features. So with that, we will move to the uh, live demonstration. We're going to follow basically the same, almost the same work, workflow as the slides. Uh, so if we go up to the file menu, we're going to just see how we can import or open an XER file. If we wanted to import an XER file, we can click the import.
And I'm just going to make a little adjustment here. Uh, and it just brings up uh, this. I'm just letting, allowing the application to show all of the dialog boxes. And we can open that up direct. Uh, we can import that in. So if I do that, we'll come up and it'll say we should get a. And we, and we can bring that in. We can also, if we wanted to, we could open it up directly and we'd do the same thing. Now that we've got this uh, open up, one of the things that the uh, XER supports is ladder tasks. That means activities that have start, start, finish, finish, uh, which the uh, Microsoft project didn't support. If we look up top here on the schedule ribbon, we can see the schedule diagnostics. Now, once we click this, it runs that automatically. So on a large schedule, Beware if it's a thousand, thousand activities, it might take a little while to run, generally not too long. We can configure which activities, we, which tests that we want to run in this dialog box here. And we can enable or disable simply by clicking on a checkbox if we want to change the color scheme. use one of these colors or we can go in oh we'll go other and I might pick something like that <clears throat> again uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of tests here mostly we're concerned about running the ones that talk about schedule integrity in terms of logic make sure there's no circular logic with dangling activities uh, there's no hard constraints. Again, one of the things that uh, do tend to uh, derail some of the simulations that we see. Uh, and you can enable or disable them in here. And once we have it set up, we can go OK. We've run that. And what it does is it shows all the tests that have been run. So it's how many, of what the percentage of uh, got that and if we go in here and click on that it will highlight those activities that are missing that are uh, <clears throat> have that missing logic so to speak if we want to we can find out what that test actually means we can double click on that and it will bring it up in the help file once we have that open up in here if we want to go directly and address that issue in the schedule, we can double click on that and we'll bring that right up. And then we can, we have that. And if we want, if we need to bring that up and modify some of the parameters, we can do that there. The other thing we have is critical path calculation. And you can see right now that I have, <clears throat> added, uh, we have two new columns that can be added into the schedule views, critical, critical and criticality. Now, if we want to go in, we can go to calculation, calculate critical path. This is not the best one to take a look at. So deterministically, we can see that one. Um, but we're not going to get a criticality index on this particular uh, schedule because it doesn't have any uncertainties. So I'm just going to go over to another activity. We can go into the objects, uh, go to calculation. We're going to calculate the critical path, enable that. And then we get that. And here, again, all the activities that are on the critical path are flagged, and we have that criticality index. If we want to see that on the Gantt chart. We can see that there. And 
Now, if we go back and we're going to reopen, uh, we're going to reopen that XVR file. just because it has a few more activities on it. And we can look at the schedule consolidation. Schedule consolidation is located on the tools tab of, on the ribbon. And it's located right here. This will happen fairly quickly. And typically we see about 10 to 20% reduction in, in the number of activities using a schedule consolidation. Uh, depending on how the schedule set up and how many uh, repeated activities are in there. We can run that, it's done that, it comes up. We run that schedule consolidation and uh, what it's done, we brought it down from 134 to 120, 14 of, so it's a little under 10%. Again, it's not something we would run on a uh, smaller schedule like this, but on these very large schedules that we have, Again, it, uh, we found that it does uh, increase performance quite a bit and makes it a more uh, workable solution when you have over 20,000 activities. Now, if we want to, we can apply uncertainties using uncertainty bands. Uncertainty bands are set up in the risk tab here, here, and we can open that up. And we have here five different bands that have been set up as an examples. If we wanted to create a new one, we could extremely critical, extremely serious. And we would then just add different coefficients. And then we could define a color. And it would be on the bands. I'm not going to, I'm uh, going to get rid of that one because Actually, I'll go back to restore defaults. And it, <clears throat> you can see these here. Uh, again, we can adjust these based out of this if we want. I'm just going to make them right skewed so they're a bit more realistic on what we would have on a schedule analysis. We can do that on the on the cost side side as well. So once we have that set up, what we can do is we can just select activities. And once we've done that, it's going to recalculate the low and high estimates based on the base, and it's going to color the activities, these durations on the Gantt chart. Again, if we want to again, So this gives us an idea, just a quick visual, um, allows us to automatically calculate on predefined coefficients, as well as gives us a quick visualization about uh, the level of risk or uncertainty that we believe are on these activities. The same can be done on the cost and income. We don't have any here, so I'm just going to go back over to our Building one, and we don't have any uncertainty. I'm just going to add some of that uncertainty into this one. And you can see we can just grab multiple ones and quickly, this is a bit haphazard. 
but this allows us to quickly add some uncertainty uh, to various activities in the schedule. And then we can just run a quick calculation based on that. The other thing that we did mention is if we go to the risks and we're on the risk workflow, the risk assignment view. Now the risk assignment view, as mentioned, is a list of all the risk assignments. And a risk assignment is broken down not just to uh, how a risk is assigned to a task, but how each assignment and an assignment is uh, at the chance or probability and the impact type um, and discuss our outcome type, which is relative delay or fixed cost delay. So we have, for, so for each one of these ones, and you can have multiple uh, assignments on for one risk on, on a task or a resource. So, so for each risk assignment, they're listed in here. So it can be used, uh, we can uh, use to uh, modify these. We can simply go in if we wanted to and change some of the inputs. We'd like to see some there, additional information. We can see where this activity that it's assignment, where it sits on the precedent network. If I want to, I can assign it to another activity. I'm not gonna do this right now. Um, <clears throat> we can have descriptions for that risk assignment. And there can be correlations. Now, uh, within our system, the default behavior, which can be turned on and off, or is that if we have one risk, uh, all of its assignments are automatically uh, correlated for one particular risk, but you can correlate other risks. Uh, you can correlate different risks in this dialog box as well. So I could select another risk and the assignment that it's to, if I wanted to, and that would now be this risk, whether they would, and on tasks on subcasing would be correlated with this risk assignment. It's gonna delete that for now. The other thing that we can do is actually we can take a look at the risk outcome. So if we do have a three point estimate on this, we can take a look at the statistical distribution. And if we want to, we can change the type of statistical distribution here, as well as the different parameters. So if we do, let's say if we went to a uh, beta PERT or PERT log normal, depending on how you want to set that up, you can uh, <clears throat> use the different ones. Right now we're using the parameters I put in, but we could change how those are set up to change that particular and customize uh, particular statistical distributions for a risk outcome. Finally, it can be used, we can export, which I'll show uh, uh, later, but we can export it out with Excel, but, or we can just print this out as a report. You can set that up. So it's, a uh, as it replaced the global risk view, uh, we find this, I think this is going to be much more useful for people in terms of a uh, reviewing and updating their risk assignments. Uh, it takes a much easier uh, way than it was in the past. And we think it'll be well received. multiple S curves. Multiple S curves builds upon uh, an existing functionality that we have, which was multiple baselines. Uh, if you were not aware of it, we do have a system in place where you can save different baselines. And in this one, uh, we, do, we have actually four baselines uh, and we can see uh, the original one showed us the major parameters of the from the simulations 
uh, and these were the mean cost, mean duration, mean finish time. Uh, we've added the ability to actually plot all of the baselines on a, on a single uh, probability plot. So if we wanted to <clears throat> set a new baseline, we could create a new baseline. Um, I'm just going to go in and make a slight change. We'll just calculate this out. And to create a new baseline that we want to plot on there, we can go to set. I'm going to call this baseline five. I'm going to, and the new act thing that we've done is we can actually uh, save the results of analysis. So each file can actually have the results of analysis saved with it as well as if you're using baselines. And so we'll go, okay. And we can now see baseline five is there. And I'm just going to hit cancel. And I'm going to just go back to manage. And that's baseline five. We'll go yes. Okay. And we can see now that it's based on baseline five down here. And I'm just going to Close a few risks. Just to give the a different flavor to it. Okay, and we will calculate. And we're going to set and we're just going to go baseline five. Now, once we go in there, I'm just going to manage this. When we go in here, we can we can change that color if we don't like quite like that color. A bright blue on there. Let's give it a pink just to define it a bit more. Okay. If we look at the manage, we can now see all the different baselines we have in there. Now, when we go to the analysis and we go to the project summary, I'm just gonna bring up the detail view of this. <clears throat> and we can see the multiple baselines on here. We can just simplify this a little bit by removing some of the, the lines on there. And there we have that multiple base. And so we can see all the different scenarios that we have in here plotted across there. And it gives us a way to look at the results of the different uh, mitigation efforts that we've done uh, as part of our analysis. Next, we're going to take a quick look at some of the new features in the risk register. So one of the things that we've added, obviously, we've cleaned it up a little bit, uh, improved some of the visual tools on it. We've added Excel like drop down list so we can sort on the columns. If we wanted to, we could sort across. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so we've added a new additional sorting on the risk register. 
we have also added the ability to have different tabs on the bottom. So if we wanted to, so we can have, and they can have different information. So I've got one tab is about the scoring and the other tab is about the risk information. Now what I can do, I'll just uh, add a little bit more to this is uh, go to modify column. Go eight. Oh, that's odd. We'll just extend that a little bit if we want. <clears throat> and we can add multiple colors if I wanted to. I could extend that down again and and we could add a different background color onto that. Oh. I put it on the wrong one. Playing with playing with columns. Uh, and so we can actually set this up. Uh, in various different ways, however you want to set it up, but it does give you a little bit more flexibility on how you want to report and what sort of information. So you can set up the risk register with multiple tabs now to, to create multiple reporting views. Now, when we go in, uh, one of the other things that we've added, this is one of the, <clears throat> is the potential loss. This is the cost of risk calculation. And we can, um, if we clear that, we could enter that cost in what we estimated it to be on, on whatever. However, uh, during the simulation, if we want to actually calculate what that potential loss is, if the risk occurs, we can select this auto calculation. I'm just going to recalculate. And it's at the per, it's at the risk, at the, uh, <clears throat> it's for each risk you can put it in. Uh, it can be set as the default. And this then calculates the potential loss, takes the, the probability, and then calculates the expected loss, which is basically potential times uh, the probability. And we can build that into the, as part of our risk mitigation strategy, understanding what the potential loss is or the expected loss and what, uh, what the cost benefit analysis uh, in terms of what sort of mitigation efforts that we can do that would make sense economically. Finally, I'm just going to take a quick look at the schedule. If we looked on and we had actuals and we wanted to start, we're in the middle of uh, uh, a project and we wanted to do some cost analysis based on the actual performance. So we're, we're sort of doing a little bit of earned value along with the, as part of the Monte Carlo simulation. In the tasks, we can actually go in here and for the drilling rig, once we've got actuals created, we can add actuals however we wanted to uh, to here. And this will be then become an actual piece and plotted as part of the cost analysis. And so it does give a little bit more flexibility 
Previously, the way that we calculated cost was based on the percent complete of the activity sort of a duration. So how many units, how much allocation has been done up. This one, we can actually directly go in from your spreadsheets or timesheets and say how much work was performed and enter it uh, directly into the application. And uh, that becomes part of the, uh, the part of your analysis. With that, I'm going to finish up the webinar today. Thank you very much for attending. If you do have any questions, please feel free to contact me at uh, Michael Trumper at Intaver.mtrumper at Intaver.com, or you can call that number. Uh, if you're interested, be on the lookout. We're uh, putting out the second version of our first book that was uh, published in 2007, uh, Project Think. We're uh, putting out our second version of that, and that is going to be uh, available within the next couple of days, November 1st, I believe. And we are actually putting up some videos on our YouTube site um, that go over some of the concepts that are covered in, our, in the new version of Project Think. Thank you very much for your time. And again, if you do have any questions, please feel free to contact me directly.